Well, I'm honored to be joined tonight by Coach Sonny Lubeck, the legendary coach from Montana State and Colorado State and parts between. And Sonny, it's so great to see you and congratulations on your induction into the Montana NFL Hall of Fame for 2019. Well, thank you very much, Bruce. It's always great to get back in Montana and see a lot of good friends, old friends and you were one of my friends all the time. We worked together for probably many years there at Montana State. Yeah, it's it, you know, and you had such great success at Montana State. You were part of Sonny Holland's staff that won a national title in 76. And when you took over the program, you had great years in 78, especially 79 when you won a Big Sky title. Tell me about your days coaching at Montana State. Uh, they were some of the most enjoyable times, you know, coming from Butte High School to Montana State and working with an individual like Sonny Holland, who really is a special person. Everyone in the state knows that. But he was great. You didn't work for him. You worked with him and all the other good coaches that we had on the staff. At the time, he didn't realize it, that we were actually having fun coaching. And uh, there were great years. And let's see, I think in 76, won a championship and national championship. And Sonny was, of course, the mentor, the leader. He was one. He, and along with Coach Perrick, you know, got me to Montana State. And I know Sonny was a huge influence. But Coach Hall has been influencing on my life all the time. But coaching at Montana State was as much fun as I've ever had in coaching. And then you went on to uh, stints at Washington State where you took teams to bowl games with Dennis Erickson and down to Miami. And the only thing you did there was win two national championships. Yeah. What was that experience like? You had a team full of NFL guys. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of thought back at it many times. Here's a guy from Butte, Montana, who's just happy, happy to be coaching a freshman team at Butte High. And all of a sudden, you find yourself as <laughs> a defensive coordinator and a co-assistant coach at the University of Miami. And of course we had, as you just alluded to, great players, tremendous player. I mean, they were, they were, man, we looked at them the first day of practice and said, holy cow, uh, they were something special. I think we had in our defensive unit that first year, we, the Dennis's team, we won the national title. We had, I think, nine or 11 seniors. Every one of them got an offer to go into the NFL at that time. We had a number one pick. And it was just, it was ridiculous how good. That, that told me then, good players make good coaches. You know, and we'll get to Colorado State next, but one thing they say about Sonny Lubeck was that he made men out of boys, and he educated them and got them their degrees and then got him other op options like going to the NFL. But what was your biggest goal as a coach? Well, as I reflected back, maybe m might mention that tonight if I don't forget it. I think, Bruce, that there are some, some of us that are just born to be coaches, that like coaching, love coaching, didn't care about all the other things stuff that went on just being around players young men and coaching them up i didn't you know i didn't ever think about why well, i'm going to do this i'm going to do that i'm going to set this goal it was just let's coach and treat try to treat everybody right of course you're not always perfect um, we made our share of mistakes there's some players i like to call back and say i'm sorry that i should have given you one more chance one more opportunity but i know that the players bought in to the culture that Coach Holland had, and I took it from each of the coaches I worked with and brought it with me, I think, to Colorado State, and the players bought into it, and they're no secrets. Just treating people right, that was, that was about it. Now, I'm going to talk to you about a little controversy in the Lubeck family. You're coaching at Miami. Your biggest rival is Florida State. Your daughter went to Florida State while you were coaching at Miami. Now, which side of the stadium did Carol Joe, your wife, sit on when Florida State played Miami? You know, that's, a, that's an interesting one because it just so happened. I remember going up our first game to play up in uh, Florida State. Bobby Bowden was the coach. We were, it was the game of the century, they said, but it was really the game of the decade. I think either they were one and we were two or vice versa. And toward the end of the year, and probably set the toll for national championship. Uh, and we won the game 17 to 16 on a wide right field goal. But I didn't know from up in the box, when you look down and you see the kick, and they moved, marched the ball down to about the 30, 25 yard line. Their kicker comes on, no time left. 
and kicks the ball there. But I'm looking at that as the flight of the ball. I couldn't tell, looking for the official. But I saw all the fans in the stands in the end zone going wild, screaming. They were all Miami fans. Michelle was sitting with her mother during the game, and I knew they were all happy. So the ball must have been wide right or wide left. <laughs> we won the game, and, and that was it. But uh, I think family always takes precedent over everything else. Sonny, what you did at, at Colorado State was remarkable in coaching. A team that had struggled before you went in, uh, won conference championships, went to bowl games. You even got the football field named after you when you were still coaching there. I don't think that happens very often, but you had a tremendous, tremendous success at Colorado State. Why? Yeah, well, I think like I alluded to a little bit earlier, just we had good players, had great coaches. Great coach. I look now, maybe five, six, seven of them are still coaching in the NFL, some in some of the major colleges around the country. And I think we, we got along well. And we treated the players right most of the time. I always preface that. <laughs> we try to do it all the time. Uh, but those, uh, and then we got lucky. And there really is no luck in anything that we do. We have our ups and downs, but things started to win. We started winning there. And I told the coaches after about three years in a row, we had a nine, a 10, 11 win season. I told them, don't coach anybody. Just let this thing go. Don't screw it up. And uh, we stayed with the thing as for a while, we had t 10 consecutive years of winning seasons and actually surprised me too. And I know you're proud of your, both your sons who both got into the coaching profession. Right. One still involved, one back at Colorado State working right. with you now. Right, that's it. Both Matt, our oldest one, he's been 25 years in college coaching in some of the best schools in the country and the biggest programs, Southeast Conference, Pac, the Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever they call it now. And then Mark, is, he's got his Super Bowl ring already. He's with... Uh, and he played at Montana State. He, he's with Buffalo Bills now. And then Michelle, she's the toughest of the whole damn bunch of them. And uh, she's in Fort Collins, too. So we're kind of fortunate to have, have our children close by, except for Mark being out in Buffalo. But I enjoy making the trip out there three or four times during the football season. So you, you're saying Michelle's got a little bit of beauty in her. She's got yeah, more than a little bit. I oh, think. that's good. Yeah. Sonny, it's so great to see you, and congratulations on your yeah. induction, and we're just happy to have you back in Montana. Well, thank you, Bruce, and you've always been a friend and a supporter of mine and a good person. Love Lisa, love you, and I'm just, we're, we're all hoping for you and get yourself in great shape again. I'll do it. Thanks, Sonny. Sonny Lubeck, 2019 inductee into the Montana NFL Hall of Fame.